For those of you who are relatively new to fish, I've got a 50 second, that's right, 5 0, 50 second uh, fish kind of experience for you here on video. I'm going to give you 50 seconds of the marketplace. Ready, set, are you ready back there, Pat? Go, let's see that marketplace one more time. Come on, somebody buy a fish! You'll never be shy again. Too much coffee! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lesson number one, fish is not a program. Fish is not a program. If you treat it like a program, it doesn't work. If you roll it out, if it's a part of a strategy, it's not going to work. Not, at least it's not going to work like other programs of the kind that we call. Fish has to start with an invitation. You can't implement play. And if, you're going to want, if you want fish in your place of work, you're going to have to ask for it. It doesn't work to tell people they have to do it. And so I get two kinds of emails. I get emails from people who have discovered fish for themselves and put it to practice in their life and they're ecstatic. And I get emails from people who have been told to be more fishy and they resist it and they, they hate it. You know? And that's the difference we're talking about. Fish has got to start with an invitation in order to avoid being another program. The second lesson learned was the uh, fact that there are so many places and so many people where the first step was taken by somebody in the organization. Not taken at the top. You know, leadership is important, but the first step is often taken by a courageous person inside the organization. And when you take that first step, you never know if there's going to be a second step. You just don't know for sure. You have no way of knowing. The third thing that kind of comes as a lesson is that I don't think I understood as how powerful this second legacy I've talked about is. We have two legacies we leave in life. We have a legacy we leave by what we do, and it's an important legacy. But we have a second legacy that we leave by who we're being while we're doing what we're doing. And that second legacy is the one that's really caught me by surprise as being as powerful as it is. Three examples, quick ones. First, Paul Wellstone passed away in this last year our senator from the state of Minnesota. And when, when a, somebody at that level passes away, there are a lot of events to celebrate. You hear a lot about it. But you know what was surprising to me is that some of the stories I heard, I heard for the first time. And the story that I remember that really stuck out was the story about Paul when he was invited to the White House. Of all the senators over the years that had been whited, invited to the White House, the favorite of the kitchen staff was Paul Wellstone. And why? because he took the time to go back and thank them after he'd had a meal there. Just one of those little things he did to make people's day, a selfless act. And that was a part of his legacy. Then there was Mike Troy, the elementary school counselor in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. One of the first fish campers that we ever had. You know, he came into fish camp. He was so excited about how he was going to put the fish to work in an elementary school, how he was going to build the kids up, how he was going to connect with them in that way. And then Mike passed away jogging with his son, 50 years old. Three weeks later, out of the blue came an email from his wife. In that email, she said, you know, at the funeral, the kids all came, and they brought little cutout fish. And on each fish was a sentiment, a personal sentiment, a connection with Mike. And they left those little fish with the family. It's not just the work we do. It's also who we're being at work.